This is Dave V3OI and this is an update to the Arduino SNA project that I've been working on. So I have updated the software and uh, as you can see here we're running uh, version 0.1e tests 2 and I've added some new features to the software including the ability to do um, SWR and return loss sweeps. There's one hardware update that was made to the Arduino SNA and uh, what was done was a, a conditioning board was added to the um, AD9850 because the impedance and output from the 9850 varied quite a bit with frequency. So with this board we have the output from the 9850 module coming and hitting a 20 dB pad with 50 ohms in, 50 ohms out, followed by a low pass filter, again 50 ohms in, 50 ohms out, and followed by a, a MAR6SM a Mimic um, RF amplifier, which again is 50 ohms in, 50 ohms out. So this uh, creates a nice stable signal coming out which is of uh, 50 ohms. Before I discuss how to calibrate and use the SNA I'd like to take a minute and just show you some of the equipment I use to calibrate the SNA and as well how to test out uh, the calibration to ensure that the calibration was done uh, properly. But before I do that I just wanted to take a quick second and just talk about uh, the actual calibration itself. Once you go through and you calibrate the, the entire SNA, it's important to note that if you go back in the future and you just calibrate one part of the SNA, that may render the other calibrations useless. So it's really important that uh, whenever you go to recalibrate the SNA, you, you calibrate the entire SNA and not just one part of it. So here's some of the equipment I use to uh, calibrate and test the SNA. Number one, you'll need uh, obviously BNC cables. I'm using these, you know, rather cheap uh, BNC cables, and uh, I'm so far I'm getting pretty good results with them. But I'm sure you'll get a lot better results if you have uh, better quality cables and connectors and things like that. You'll need a signal source. I'm using the XG3 signal source, and uh, to do the calibration you'll need a 0 dBm and minus 73 dBm signals. As well, I've got a frequency counter here, a homebrew uh, frequency counter. That's handy to calibrate the, uh, the accuracy of the frequency coming out of the uh, 9850. I've also got a, a MFJ antenna analyzer. I use this to to validate the, uh, the calibration for the return loss bridge and make sure I'm getting pretty good results for S SWR and impedance readings. So I've got, uh, I've got a low pass filter here that I use um, to uh, uh, test the, uh, the sweep. Uh, as well I have got a little jig I built here and it's got a 100 ohm resistor connected to a BNC cable and I use that uh, to check uh, the SWR. Uh, as well, I've got some other things. I've got a straight through uh, BNC connector to connect uh, the, uh, uh, very, uh, the BNC cables that's going to the 9850 and the uh, 8307. As well, I've got some terminators here. Um, I've got here 50 ohm terminators that I use for the uh, uh, calibrating the return loss bridge. Here I've got a return loss bridge that I use, and I'll go through the return, return loss bridge uh, later on. As well, something handy to have is uh, attenuators. So what you could use the attenuators for is you could do a sweep with an uh, attenuator and see if you're seeing the, um, the drop in uh, uh, dB that corresponds to the, uh, the attenuation value. So when you load the, the new code and you power on 
the uh, the SNA for the first time, you'll get a couple of uh, warning messages. The first one here is saying that the AD9850 is not calibrated, and what that means is that the the frequency accuracy of the uh, AD9850 has not been been uh, compensated for, so the frequency output could be off by uh, several hundred hertz. Then it asks to push a button. And then next message saying the 8307 is not calibrated, and that's pretty uh, self-explanatory because what that's doing, that is uh, uh, taking a look at the uh, the logarithmic uh, output from the 8307 and uh, doing a calculation to convert that into dBm. So that has not been done, and finally it says uh, the sweep has not been calibrated. So what that means is that the output, the signal output from the AD9850 um, is unknown. So what basically the SNA does, it characterizes the signal as a function of frequency so it knows what the output uh, signal strength going to the device under test is. Then it, it once it knows what's coming back from the device under test, it can then do a, a determination of the uh, difference or the dB. So the first step in the SNA calibration process is to calibrate the uh, 8307 and we would do that by selecting calibrate uh, dBm. So I've got my XG3 connected up and uh, it's saying here to connect a 0 dBm source and press any key. So I've got the X3 set to 0 dBm and I press a key and it comes back and it says uh, connect to minus 73 dBm source and press any key to continue. So I've done that. So what should be done next is to validate the uh, 8307 calibrate so we can uh, go and select power meter and so this is dis displaying the uh, dbm output it's uh, seeing from a device under test so i've got my xg3 set to zero dbm and it's reading zero dbm and if i go to minus 73 it's showing it's uh, minus 72 minus 73 so it's, uh, it's very close, so it looks as if uh, that's a good calibration. So the next thing to be done will be to calibrate the frequency accuracy of the uh, 9850. So what you would do is connect the 9850 to a frequency counter, and you would uh, have it display a frequency and adjust the calibration constant to uh, to get uh, a known frequency out. So here you would select calibrate frequency and it's telling you it's putting out the frequency here and uh, this reading is it's in kilohertz so it's saying it's putting out 10 megahertz and if you push the select button you can go down to where it says new so you're going to be changing the new uh, calibration constant so I know it's around 32 so I'm just going to go up to 32 and uh, come over here and uh, we're seeing it's uh, it's about uh, it's roughly about uh, 10 megahertz so looks as if the frequency uh, accuracy is good. The next calibration to be done is the characterization of the signal strength that's coming out of the 9850 versus frequency. So the SNA takes a look at that and maps uh, frequency versus uh, signal strength. So then in the future that when you do a sweep it knows what the signal level is coming out of the 9850 and uh, it can then determine what the gain or loss is of the signal that's coming from the device under test. So to do this you would select calibrate sweep and it says to connect in to out and uh, do a rotary push to continue. So I've got a 
a barrel connector connecting the two BNC cables that are going to the 9850 and the 8307. So we're all set to go and I press the button and it's doing the sweep and it uh, saves the parameters and uh, that's all done. So the next step will be to uh, validate uh, the calibration of, of uh, the 9850 and the 8307 and this can be easily done by using the frequency generator feature here but first we'll need to connect the 9850 to the 8307 just using a straight through BNC cable. So once that's done you turn it on or you enable that function and so from the readout saying it's putting out uh, the, the 9850 is generating a 10 megahertz signal and the 8307 is seeing a minus 11 dBm signal is in and uh, based on the sweep calibration we did where we characterized the signal level output from the uh, 9850 as a function of frequency, it's saying that uh, it's uh, about 0 0.3, 0 0.2 uh, dB down. So that's that's perfect. So the uh, it's showing that uh, the expected value and the actual value coming in differs by uh, about 0 0.2, 0 0.3 uh, dB, which is excellent. Another simple test you can do to verify that the uh, 9850 and the 8307 are working uh, uh, together is you can connect a attenuator between them. And here I have connected a 15 dB um, attenuator between the 9850 and the 8307. So from the menu you would once again select uh, Frequency Generator and uh, it's showing you the difference in signal level here what the from what the uh, 8307 is reading uh, compared to what the um, what the SNA thinks the 9850 is putting out and it's showing that there's a difference of uh, minus 17 dB which is about right because we've got a 15 dB attenuator inserted So at this point, we can go ahead and use the, uh, the SNA. It has been calibrated sufficiently to do sweeps of filters. However, if you wanted to do an SWR or an impedance sweep or a return loss uh, sweep, you'll need to calibrate the uh, return loss bridge. And what that entails is uh, connecting the SNA to your return loss bridge and doing a couple of sweeps. Uh, to calibrate. One is where the return loss bridge is open, uh, i.e. it's not connected to an antenna, and then you do another sweep with the return loss bridge connected to a dummy load, a 50 ohm dummy load. So for this we'll have to use a return loss bridge, and so I've got a return loss bridge here I've got from Kevin, VA3KHH, that uh, he lent to me, and basically it's got an input port which the signal from the 809850 will feed. It's got an antenna port or you know a device under test port. That's where your device under test will connect, uh, i.e. an antenna. And then you've got a detector port and that's where the 8307 will uh, connect to. So to run the calibration for the return loss bridge, you would select calibrate uh, RLB for return loss bridge, and uh, it comes back and it says open bridge and press any button. So I've got my bridge connected up and it's open. There's nothing connected to the device under test port, and I run this, and it's going to chug away for about 30 or 40 seconds. And I'll just pause the video until it's. So after it's finished, it comes back and it says connect uh, 50 ohm load to the bridge. And so I've got that. Uh, so I've got a 50 ohm terminator connected to the device under test port. And so I go ahead and I press any button. 
And again, it chunks along for about 30 or 40 seconds, and I'll pause the video once again. The calibration of the SNA is now complete. We've gone through all the calibration steps to calibrate the 8307 to 9850 in the re return loss bridge. So at this point, we can go ahead and use it to generate sweeps. So I'll go through some of the features of it. We've already used the, the power meter to validate the output from the XG3 that was used to, uh, to calibrate the 8307. We've already used the frequency generator to check the, the sweep calibration. And uh, basically the frequency generator, it's generating a signal out of the 9850, a known frequency, and it's measuring what's being returned. And it's telling you the uh, difference in dB between what's being put out by the 9850 and what's being measured by the, uh, uh, the 8307. So the frequency generator you could use, for example, for doing a manual sweep. Uh, then there's the one-time sweep and the x-time sweep, which is multiple sweeps. And then there's the files option, which allows you to um, retrieve saved sweeps. And you've got on the right-hand side the reset files, and that basically uh, uh, deletes all the files. So let's go ahead and do a sweep. So for this first sweep, all I've got is uh, connected is I've got a 15 dB terminator connected between uh, the 9850 and the uh, 8307. So let's go ahead and uh, do a sweep. So we select that option. So it tells us, it's asked us for the start frequency, stop, uh, uh, two frequency markers, and something new that's added is the sweep type. So right now it's saying FILT, which is a filter sweep. So we can um, scroll through and change the start, stop, change the marker frequencies, and we can change the sweep type with the rotary encoder. So we could do an SWR sweep, a return loss sweep, an impedance sweep, and a filter sweep. So for this, we're just going to do a simple filter sweep. We'll execute it, and again, it's just a uh, 15 dB attenuator, and it's coming back, and it's saying my two markers uh, that I had set up, it's uh, measuring minus 16 uh, uh, dB. So um, that is pretty good because we've got a 15 uh, a dB attenuator, and we're seeing 16 uh, dB attenuation, which is pretty darn good. Now keep in mind that I'm using crappy coax cables and I've got wires all over the place so I would expect a little bit of variation there. So in this mode it says uh, uh, rotary encoder push to jump so what that does if you push the encoder a cursor comes up where you could manually scan or you could manually look at values. You can push the value to jump or you could turn it to slowly uh, change where you want to measure on the curve and it's giving you the dB measurement here. As I change that you'll see the, uh, the signal level changing there. So then it says press execute or select to exit. Then it gives you an option to save this. So if you were to push the execute button this would save the uh, sweep so there I'm, I'm saving it to, uh, to the memory right now. And we, re we return back to the main menu. So uh, for the next sweep I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep a uh, 20 meter low pass filter I've got connected. So we'll go ahead and select one sweep. We select the start fre frequency, so we'll go from uh, 1 megahertz to 33 megahertz, and I will change my markers. So this marker I'll set to 14, maybe 14200. And you push the rotary encoder to change the um, 
the digit you're going to change. So here it's saying it's uh, it's changing it by 10. Here it'll change it by 100. So 100 kilohertz. So I'm going to change that down to 14200. And I'll leave the upper marker at, uh, at uh, 22400. And I'll execute. So there's the sweep. It's complete there. You could see the two markers. And uh, you could see for marker 1, it's saying it's down uh, 0.3 uh, dB. So it's still in the filter passband. And uh, for uh, marker 2, which is over here, it's saying it's, it's uh, almost 40 dB down. And again, we exit and we can save this plot. So if we Select Execute there, it's saving the plot. And we return back to the main menu. So let's do some multiple sweeps. So the X sweeps option allows you to do six concurrent sweeps. So it'll overlay all six sweeps, it won't erase the sweeps, and that way you can compare su successive sweeps. So for example, if you had a bandpass filter that you were, you were adjusting to get the optimum uh, 3 dB points, you can uh, use this option. So once selected, it uh, allows you again to set the start, stop, and the marker frequencies and the sweep type. Uh, you would just do this once for the initial sweep, and all successive sweeps will use this information. So I've still got the uh, low-pass filter connected, and we're going to do a sweep. So there's the low-pass filter, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around a little bit with the low-pass filter, and uh, try and get a different sweep to come up. So there you can see the different sweep there and I'm just playing around with the connector here so there's the uh, sweep there at the bottom so you get the general idea you would just uh, continue to do this continue pressing the select button to um, um, or, or the execute button to continue and if you press the select button you would exit now in this mode you cannot sweep files you cannot uh, save your sweeps so in the files mode so we've saved two files so far and you could use the rotary encoder to select which file you want to view and you would press the uh, execute to display it so that was our sweep we did of the uh, uh, 15 dB uh, attenuator. And here's the sweep we did of the low pass filter. And uh, in this mode you can also use the cursor. You can cursor over and display values the same way as uh, we did in the single sweep mode. So next we'll do uh, some uh, sweeps using the return loss bridge. We'll do an SWR sweep. So one of the, one of the things uh, I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to delete all my files and uh, reset, uh, do a general reset. What um, the, the SNA now does, every time you do a sweep, it remembers all the parameters all the you know the uh, types of the, the sweep type you do the marker frequency start stop frequency it remembers all that so the next time you do a sweep it's going to use those same values when you reset your files you're not only deleting all your files but you're also resetting uh, the saved value so i'm just going to go ahead and reset my files so it says uh, press execute to reset or press select to exit so there I've reset uh, my files and I've reset the saved uh, values. So now if I go back to sweep, it goes back to the defaults. So here I am going to cursor over. I'm going to go over to the filter. Instead of using a filter, I'm going to use an SWR sweep. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect a simple 100 ohm resistor to the return loss bridge. So with a 100 ohm resistor uh, connected I should see an SWR of 2 to 1. So right now I've got it connected to the MFJ analyzer and here you can see the MFJ analyzer is saying it's seeing an SWR of uh, 1.9. So let's go ahead and connect that up to the return loss bridge. So let's go ahead and do an SWR sweep here and see what our SNA uh, thinks the SWR should be. So let's go ahead and execute. So it's showing a flat SWR line and if I look at the markers my markers are saying it's uh, about uh, 1.89 or 1.84 and the MFJ was saying it's 1.9. So that's pretty darn close. So um, that test uh, seems to work. So let's connect it to an antenna. So I've got my MFJ connected to my uh, TH3 uh, HF tribander. It's uh, 2015 and 10. Uh, meter uh, Yagi. So right now it's uh, the MFJ is looking at 14.136 megahertz and it's seeing an SWR about 2.2. Uh, it's been raining here all day and my antenna is probably water soaked and uh, I'm seeing a slightly higher SWR. Norm normally it's down around 1.4. So let's go over and let's see what the uh, the SNA uh, thinks the SWR for this antenna is at that frequency. So we'll select the one sweep and again as I pointed out it remembers our last sweep. So our last sweep was from 1 to 33 megahertz with those markers and uh, doing a SWR sweep. So let's change these parameters. So I'm going to do a sweep from Let's go from 12 megahertz and we'll go over to 16 megahertz. And let's set our marker here to 14 point one three five. So there's one. So I'll set it to 14.13. And I'll set the other marker to say 15 megahertz. Set to 15.430. So let's go ahead and execute that. So there I've got a nice big dip here. And let's uh, see what, what the SWR of that dip is. So the bottom of the dip is uh, 2.43, which is pretty close to what the uh, MFJ analyzer was seeing in my marker, or it's 2.32. My marker for M1, which was 14.13, uh, is 2.43, which again is very close to what the MFJ uh, was uh, reporting. So this is pretty impressive. Um, it's uh, very close. The SWR is... Uh, almost identical to what the uh, MFJ antenna analyzer is reporting. So at that point I think that demonstrates all the features, all the key features of the um, uh, the SNA. There's a couple other features which uh, you can explore and play around with, but uh, that concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching.